Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the uh, week ahead video. We'll be doing on the Asian Open on Sunday U.S. time, Sunday evening U.S. and Asian mornings. Uh, we'll start doing a slightly longer, uh, longer video for the, the weekly outlook. Uh, you know, want to get you guys up to speed and what happened out, kind of recap some of what happened last week. Any important news that came out over the weekend that may be market moving, and then the the uh, the economic data, the the important um, the important data that's that's uh, coming ahead in the in the session ahead, and anything that's you know and highlight a few things that are uh, could be market moving in the new in the new week. I've got the uh, the S and P's the, the stocks in the U S just opened um, about forty five minutes ago. They came under pretty heavy selling pressure. Um, S and P's and Nasdaq were both down about 0.5 to 0.7 percent uh, straight away on the open. S and P's got down to twenty six fifteen and and uh, the E-mini NASDAQ got down to uh, 65.74, I think that is. Let me, let's see here. Yeah, so, you know, bo both under some pressure. There was some, you know, some of this Mueller-Trump investigation. There was some news that came out that, uh, you know, was tying Trump and his family to some of the uh, the Russian meddling and the in the 2016 presidential election so uh, you know that, that's a it's a fluid uh situation and we'll be monitoring it but uh just kind of wanted to get over with um as far as let's start out with uh you know what kind of what happened last week um on friday opec agreed to cut production by 1.2 million barrels a day which was pretty much expected the i think the market was anywhere between kind of one a little over one and 1.3. Um, oil closed the week higher, finally. Uh, I believe it was up 2.9% on the week. Um, so it did have a decent rally and then kind of faded a bit. Um, and recapping some of the Brexit stuff, which is just exhausting. Uh, May lost the contempt vote last week, but the ECJ ruled the UK can withdraw from Article 50 unilaterally and open the door for no Brexit. So we know we have the Brexit Parliament vote Tuesday. That is, she's not expected to win. I think that's been priced in in Sterling, and we will get to the charts in a minute. Um, we also have some central bank meetings. We've got the Norges Bank, which is important. We have um, some long Naki stock again. That performed pretty well on Friday, and it's, it, Naki stock has been under... Um, a lot of pressure. I don't think anyone listening to this really cares about Naki stock. Why don't we look at the chart? Because I've got time. I've got more time to speak to all of you fellow privateers. Here's a weekly, or sorry, a daily. So we had a doji day on uh, Thursday. Perfect doge. Big up day. This was kind of a combination of stronger oil and I think just might be risk off in general where the Swedish Krone uh, does not perform well in a risk-off environment. So we got these highs here. We're playing. We're looking for kind of 107.50 for this move, somewhere around this high, this weekly high. Got a you know a few weeks left until the end of the month. So we got one. Yeah, we got plenty of time left on that one. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. But let's get to some. Um, Let's get to some of the more interesting charts. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to weeklies. So this 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 video will be looking at a lot of weekly videos. Or, you know, I think Japanese bond futures open a couple of ticks lower from Friday's closing levels. JGB futures now trading at 151.72, up 11 ticks and from previous what settlement. Fundamental news that came out. Dollar yen now trading at 112.47, uh, yen is up 0.2%. You know, we did have a job Japan's third quarter Friday GDP and data and coming up uh, in about four minutes. Payrolls, the Estimate is minus 0.5% quarter on quarter, minus 2% uh, 
for the annualized GDP <coughs> deflate as seen at minus you know, 0.3% year on year. Looking back at the weekly charts, the daily charts Japan's today, October trade balance estimate is minus 265 and billion yen. If we start Current here account balance expected at plus 1.26 trillion yen. Dollar weekly. Um, this is pretty interesting looking candle. So remember we, I'll show you what the daily looked like. So remember we gapped open higher after the positive tariff news from the G20. So we had that big gap higher. So last week we closed at uh, 7307, not this past Friday, but the, not this past Friday, but the week before. We gapped open. Take a look at this. This is very ugly. When you have this island top kind of uh, island top reversal, see how we tested the 74 area again on uh, Tuesday, and then we've just got a sea of red for the rest of the week. So if we go over to the weekly chart, you'll be able to see the bearish engulfing. And this is a very, very negative pattern. Um, for us, we are looking, we're just under the half. Fit. Just a reminder that we have Eurex extended trading hours for some Eurex futures uh, this, has got this morning, opening in about 13 minutes time. We've got booms, bubble, chats, Euro stocks and DAX futures opening at 8 a.m. Hong Kong time. Boom futures settled at 163.17, uh, closed at 37. Uh, Boom futures are called to open at 58. So that's the Australian Bubble dollar. futures at um, 53, 132.53, and, right and Shats futures at uh, 111.94, so based chart. on U.S. Thinot futures. Too was a massive bearish Euro stocks futures daily. on Friday closed at 30.61. I've uh, identified here. Same type of pattern as the Aussie dollar, and we go to the weekly, and it was a really ugly uh, risk-off bar for the weekly. We actually took out one, two, three, four weeks of lows in the process of forming this this uh, <coughs> bearish engulfing or outside reversal lower bar. So, you know, for me, Aussie yen has got. Uh, you know, we can retrace, let's just run the fibs here on the weekly. We'll take that low that we saw in October, which was also that big period of risk off. Uh, Aussie Yen seems to be the best, the most highly correlated to the stocks. Um, you know, not too far really. 80, 80, 62 is the two thirds fib. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven week swing. So kind of two months. So 80, 62, and then all the way down here at 79, 83. Um, could be the targets for this move if we get if we do get follow through. So let me write that down. Eighty sixty two. And again, this is I'm doing this not just for our viewers, but also for me and my partners because um, you have to plan your trade in advance. And I tend to like to do this a little bit earlier, but I want to wait for the S and P's to open open today. Um, I, I generally will send this thing out. Um, it'll be, you'll be able to watch it probably right when you're getting your trading desks. Um, but it is nice to at least have, uh, you know, live S and P prices and, uh, you know, we expected them to open a bit lower. They probably gapped down, I don't know, five handles and then, you know, dropped another 20 and you know, we're hanging kind of around 26, 12 right now, right near the lows. Um, let me stick with these, um, reversal patterns. So that was, uh, that's Australian yen, Australian dollar versus the yen. Um, S&P futures extending losses now down 23 and a half bucks, trading at 26.12. USD not futures ugly, up ugly. six full and ticks can, at 120.29. On, on uh, Friday after their, their, they had a blockbuster jobs number. You can see though that the slow here, 83.60 is very important, Cadian. So another bearish engulfing. So what we're seeing now, we've seen two Aussie crosses. Japan's GDP minus 0.6%. Japan third quarter GDP Current minus 2.5% on annualized basis. Yeah. Estimate minus 2.0%. <coughs> against this estimate of minus 2%. Uh, Nominal GDP minus 0.7%. Against estimate of minus 0.5%. Is out. Um, not that it really matters because. Japanese data doesn't move the market and hasn't done so in 
number of years. Japan's um, third quarter GDP minus 0.6%. Against That's estimate of minus 0.5 year on year, no, annualized GDP minus 2.5 percent, against Three estimate of minus 2 percent. Current there. account balance for October 1.3 trillion yen, against tax, estimate of 1.26 trillion. Um, <coughs> Private consumption was down 0.2 percent, against estimate of minus 0.1 percent. Uh, Business spending. Minus 2.8 percent against Sterling, estimate of minus 1.8 percent. Um, you know, pretty much unchanged in the week. We'll hop over to the sterling versus dollar, the cable chart. Um, now, this this charting service is it's. I think this is a little bit off of sterling Aussie, but either way, pretty powerful. It bounced off the 200 uh, week, and you know we got up into here, and actually I think this close is a little bit higher than what the, this chart's showing. Um, so you get the drift. That's that's four Aussie crosses. Um, very negative patterns. We have the Nikkei also had an outside reversal lower week, along with the DAX and FTSE. So once again, the theme continues to be risk off. Uh, the Nasdaq just put in a reversal lower, not an outside week. But let's take a look at that, just to give you an example of. Um, what a, just a normal reversal chart would look like, and that's this bar here. So we made a new high, obviously after the G20, and then we reversed. We did not close below the lows, but either way, you know, pretty pretty ugly pattern. Um, S and P uh, looks very similar. That one almost got outside. That almost went outside, and. Uh, Australian bond auction coming up shortly. We've got 700 we got million Aussie dollars of 2029 Swissy. notes on the auction today. Risk off, uh, Australian 10-year bond futures weekly. currently up four basis Irish points at 97.59. Yeah, USD not futures up yeah. six and a half full ticks at 120.29 and, and a half. Also, in about seven yeah, minutes time, we've got Eurex extended trading next. hours. Yes, you're Booms, getting this bubble, here. Shats, big, big and euro stocks and DAX futures opening in Asia. Um, For Bund futures, the last traded price on Friday was 163.37. Bund futures rand. are called to open so at 58. EM, EM bubble futures at 53. Is, shats at 111.94. Um, you know, it's prevalent when you have a risk off type environment. So, anyhow, so those are the weeklies. Um, it's pretty clear, I think, to everyone by now that uh, these markets, the, the, they're in risk-off mode, and I think you can keep playing, keep selling Aussie crosses and some of these yen crosses. Um, gold actually had, gold's at a really important level here. It, it's not been on many people's radars um, because if you want to take a look at but this level here, we, we, took, we took out these highs here, this 12... 45, and uh, I think the CTA community is still pretty well short. Um, you know, I think we're going to go attack this uh, this 200-day moving average at 12.59, and th there's a bunch of analysts that have been calling for kind of 1,300 plus by the end of the year. So if you if you do get continued equity weakness, uh, I would say that uh, you know you're going to see gold shoot higher just on a Kind of Japan's October trade balance uh, came out at minus 321.7 billion yen against yeah, estimate uh, of minus 265 you know, billion yen. Dollar yen uh, now trading at 112.47. Yen is up 0.2 percent. Aussie dollar uh, is down 0.4 percent. Now trading at 71.80. Trading near the lows of the day. Here's some a couple lines I drew. So we had the we had the, the G20 risk on rally. Uh, so for me, the lines in the sand are like this 28.25 on the top side <clears throat> and 26.03 on the downside. If, and I think this could happen in the next trading session, we get under here, um, I think we go and attack these old lows at 25.27. I got a line here too. I don't know what that line is. That's an old one, I think. Hold on. Um, there is a there is a trend line, this blue one. I don't know if you can see this. That comes in kind of right on today's lows. So we've been in this sideways range now for the past few weeks. If 2603 goes, there's going to be a shit ton of 
stops below there. Um, you know, uh, as a reminder, just note on the uh, Japanese I think I said data. This the other night in the video, the, the SPX close. This was the biggest fall in business spending since 2009. So we're now negative Third quarter final business spending was down 2.8 percent, minus 2.8 percent against the estimate of minus 1.8 percent. Um, the Nasdaq close was 63.96, and then the Dow Jones was 24,719. So we've got. Um, the S&P is negative on the year, the Nasdaq's positive on the year. Um, and I really do think, you know, Trump's going to send out his, send out his troops and, you know, try to, you know, either get the Fed speakers to start sounding more dovish to try to... Australian uh, bond auction coming up uh, shortly. Try to 700 million market. Aussie dollars of 2029 uh, notes on the auction today. I can't imagine... Australian 10 year bond futures now trading at 97.59, four basis points higher you know, on the day. He's done such a good job, and the country's growing, and the and the uh, stock market's up. You know, was up 10, 15 percent. Um, well, you know, now we're pretty much unchanged on the year. So, um, you know, it's something to watch. That 2673 in S&P is kind of my pivot. I'm short below it. I'm long above it. Uh, if we pop back over the currencies. Let's take a look at Aussie daily. Let's get back to daily. Uh, you can see here. You know, we do have some FIB support and no low here at 71.60, about 20 points lower. And then down here at 71, call it 71.10. Um, these are the targets for this sell-off in Aussie. 7020 area is the 2018 lows. Uh, let's look at the boring euro. I know a lot of you trade it. I do not trade it, and I will not trade something that is, you know, stuck in this range. But you can see it's kind of in this... Uh, this triangle and for me I, I I'm I'll be bullish above this trend line and this horizontal at 114 20 30 area and if we take out 113 the figure um, you know 112 65 you know that I think we can get your ex futures opening shortly 20 low. Bund futures but last about, traded price was 163 37 is uh, euro stocks futures settled at 3061 kind of last week Last uh, traded price was 30.40. S&P futures now down 22 bucks, average, which trading at 26.14.50. Um, we got we got this trend line, this uptrend line from uh, from a, from the August low. It came in on uh, on Thursday. It, it touched it, and we did touch the 100-day moving average. Look at how this 100-day moving average is held dollar yen. You know, if we start getting daily closes under it, I am going to be bearish. So we have. A touch here, we have a breach, but closed back above here in uh, October. We had another breach here, reversed higher from it. Another one here, reversed higher. You know, we can go back. You know, so we've been above it, and we've breached it a few times in the past since August. But um, you know, we haven't really been below it since April. So it is interesting that. We're also right near the cloud bottom, I believe. Comes Just note on the Eurex extended trading hours. And the low the pre-trading will open at 8 a.m. in about one minute. Uh, and low? we'll continue for 10 minutes. So the opening auction will be um, the between comes 10 one, past one, and quarter past. Cloud bottoms, one, and continuous trading you know will begin at like quarter past the hour. Um, if we start breaking under here, the, you know, my initial target would be right down around here, call 111.40. 3540. Um, let's look at Euro Yen. Euro Yen, we got a nice uptrend line. Comes in today around 127.65. Uh, if we get a break of that, I've got FIB support here at 126.75. And, uh, and then that low here at 126.60. So. We still like uh, selling rallies in this. You know, we'll be looking to sell, you know, anything near Friday's high, 128.60 area. Um, you know, see, so you, you get the drift. We're, we're, we're still leaning left, as we like to Bit say. Bitcover is 2.8, 2.75 on the Australian auction. Here the, here the Average fibs, yield uh, is 2.4121%. Bit Bitcover, 2.8. Is the, is the next fib. Two-thirds of the three-quarters. Um, 
Japanese Chewy. stocks open lower, topics down 1.5%, Nikkei index down 1.7%. S&P futures now down 20 bucks. Um, you know, a little bit of early weakness here in Asia. And under there I've got some fibs that come in right here at 67, 62. We've got some lows at 52, so somewhere around this zone. Looks like it could be, let me get rid of this one here, hold on, between lines. Uh, you know, I could see this get down, what is that, be the 100 days, 66, 65, somewhere down there by, uh, you know, in the next week or so. Um, what else are we looking at? Um, we talked about the, got the central bank meetings coming up, Nordisk Bank, SNB, ECB, bunch of PMI numbers. Um, there was a headline out that China's foreign ministry summoned the UN, U.S. ambassador um, in China over the Huai arrest of the CFO. You know that that that's what caused that big uh, that big gap, that kind of fat finger type big gap. Let's take a look at that chart again. I think we highlighted that the other day. Um, where are we? Yeah, on uh, the other night on the open where we had that big uh, that big gap down and I think the S&Ps were down about 2% or something in a hurry. It was here, this bar. We uh, we closed around 2715. That was the, uh, the day of George H.W. Bush's funeral. And the Hawaii CFO news had come out before the S&Ps and uh, U.S. futures reopened. We had that big drop here. Supposedly CME came in with a circuit breaker. And kind of pause and you can see it's you know we're, we're much lower than even that low that we made at 2650 so still looks pretty heavy to me um that's an ongoing uh ongoing story and i think people are investors are becoming worried that it's going to affect the negotiations between g and trump and the trade negotiations and they've got another 90 days to kind of sort that out um, we do have seven central bank meetings over the next fortnight, which is uh, interesting. I, so, I, you know, we're expecting a, a fair amount of volatility these next couple of weeks uh, with a lot of event risk. Um, you know, the key, the parliamentary vote on, uh, on Tuesday is going to be important. And uh, let me just, I'm just going through some of my notes here. Well, we all know about the bond the bond uh, moves. They've been pretty powerful. Getting into some support in the 10 years, it's around 2, it closed around 285. Down, it was down 16 basis points last week. It's a big move. Um, we are, um, we do have support kind of 278 to 280, so we're not too far away from that. Um, so that should do it. That should be a pretty good, uh, Pretty good, you know, last week's uh, Dollar yen catching a small bit, not trading at 112.57. Yen is up 0.1%. US T not futures up 3.5 full ticks at 120.26.5. Emin SP futures down 18.5 bucks at 26.17.50. And as we approach your end, there's going to be fewer and fewer players. As uh, you know, There's a lot of the faster money hedge fund types that are kind of wrapping it up for the year. They've, they've had. Uh, tough couple of months and uh, I just don't think that their risk appetite is, is is there and so I think you're gonna get some very whippy moves and you know, I'm, I'm expecting to see some money be put back to work in January so um, you know stay out of trouble don't chop yourself out in these uh, illiquid markets especially as we approach year end you know if you're up money this year you want to kind of finish near the highs and uh, and then definitely stay nimble. All right, that should do it. You'll hear from us tomorrow uh, in, during the London uh, London o London session. I'll send out any tweets tonight if anything uh, interesting shows up on the radar. I'll be in front of the screens for a, a few more hours. Good luck trading, and we will speak to you soon. Cheers.